As a professional fat guy, an amateur globetrotter, and a wannabe Anthony Bourdain, when I travel, I don't travel on my stomach so much as I travel for my stomach. Everywhere I go, I have the intention of tapping into local food culture and discovering foods that I would otherwise not find. And I think the best way to do this is by visiting local food markets, or as the new modern terminology would call them, a wet market. For those of you who've never been to a market like this, I feel like your mental image is probably deeply flawed or, you know, just outright wrong. Because while the animal markets in China and Southeast Asia are breeding grounds for disease and animal abuse, most traditional markets are just a way of life in second and third world countries. They allow for villagers to bring their goods into urban settings and sell them for a profit. And they also allow people to choose an alternative to mass-produced foodstuff. So, Try and avoid high-minded first world judgment when watching this. <laughs> Don't judge me, food. Today we'll be taking a virtual walking tour of a typical Eastern European food market using footage that I serendipitously shot in pre-quarantine February. However, please keep in mind that this video will contain images of animal products that might be uh, disturbing to some people. So with that in mind, let's throw on our shoes and get out of the kitchen. Because today, we're going to take a tour through a food market. Markets are an excellent way to get farm fresh goods that would otherwise be impossible to find. The vast array of goods and products here really is a dream for a lot of home cooks. The better markets are typically ones that are temporary, usually set up and torn down every Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. No big box store or modern grocer can compete with these markets in terms of quality and freshness of seasonal produce. While the concept of buying a few carrots or tomatoes from a local grower might not be too hard to wrap your head around, an open-air meat market might be a little bit more alien. Livestock are butchered in villages and then brought into the city on trailers or in minivans. They are then broken down by axe or hatchet on massive wooden butcher's blocks. This practice is taken to the extreme in rural villages where they sell what is called barnoya masa, or literally, steamy meat. Meat sold so fresh that it is still steaming from the animal's residual body heat after being exposed to frigid winter air. It doesn't get any fresher than this. At these markets, most meat availability depends on breeding and slaughter seasons, with chickens being more plentiful in the summer, turkey in the early fall, beef in the fall to winter, and pork throughout the winter into the early spring. However, in Eastern Europe, pork is a constant. So much so, that having a market without pork would be unthinkable. More specifically, a market in Ukraine without salo would be almost akin to treason. Salo are the large white coils of fatback that are sold, skin on, and eaten raw or salted. As for the availability of other animals, rabbits, quail, goat, lamb, ducks, and even pigeon can be found at these markets. And if a certain animal is in season, <laughs> Boy howdy, you can be damn well sure that all of the animal is available. Nothing is taboo and nothing is wasted. Ears, tongues, sweetbreads, offal, cheeks, hooves, intestines, stomachs, livers, kidneys, glands and gizzards, testicles, hearts, brains, tails, bones of all shapes and sizes, udders, snouts, reproductive uh, bits, Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I mean, it's all there. This whole animal utilization makes sure that nothing is wasted and allows for Hannibal-esque gruesome kitchen weirdos like myself to experiment with ingredients and dishes that would otherwise require access to some secret cabal of Frankenstein-like ranchers to obtain in America. And for those of you worried about sanitation and potential health risks, the animals are butchered off-site, and there's no blood to act as a vector. I have eaten from markets like these on a weekly basis for almost a decade, and not once gotten sick. I mean, McDonald's has a higher failure rate when it comes to giving me bubble gut. While almost every market will have dried, smoked, cured, or salted fish, not every market will have live fish. 
The live fish in Eastern European markets are almost chiefly made up of carp and catfish, so you know, basically the fish equivalent of Walmart hot dogs. But you can occasionally come across sturgeon or other oddities, like crawfish if in season. Other markets closer to large bodies of water would likely have much better options when it comes to fish. The fish are purchased live, clubbed and bagged with the intention to be taken home and immediately cleaned and eaten. While most dairy products from Eastern Europe are wildly underwhelming, especially if compared to other European countries, the best of the best of Eastern Europe's dairy products can be found either in high-end, overpriced, and self-aggrandizing specialty shops, or at markets like these for exceptionally reasonable prices. Cheeses of various textures and flavors, and milk so fresh you can still taste the cow, and nearly any dairy product in between can be found at markets like these. Whether you like sheep, goat, or cow cheeses, creamy and smooth, or aged and pungent cheeses, they have a little bit of everything here. Occasionally you can find farm fresh milk served from these massive tankers, not unlike in Soviet times. However, the lines are quite long and you're expected to bring your own jars or jugs. The difference in quality between farm fresh milk and that of store-bought milk is truly night and day. These markets aren't just raw ingredients. A lot of locals also come to sell ready-made foods. Some can be as simple as barrels of pickled cabbage, however, some markets are complex enough to have an entire food court-like setup, with pop-up kitchens that can serve some surprisingly amazing food. What's available depends on the size of the market and the country you're in. In Eastern Europe, you'd be hard-pressed to find a market worth its salt without shashlik, a post-Soviet classic. The meat used in these shish kebabs is typically pork, but lamb or beef is also common. You can also usually find a place to sit down and enjoy your movable feast, or just take a quick break. Plov, from our earlier video, is also typically made and sold here from massive cauldrons. Roast potatoes skewered with slabs of fatback are a Slavic favorite, and you can typically find salads, baked goods, or breads, and veggies to go with your meat and rice. Some of the vendors may even have samochon, or moonshine for sale, but you have to ask nicely because shh, it's a secret. You can also usually find cooked pork tongue ears and snout, the ears being an oddly popular beer snack, along with any other conceivable pork product. Sausages in every form and filling are wildly popular, and worlds better than anything you'd ever find in a store. Just find the vendor with the longest line, as it's a universal indicator for something worth waiting for. Dried meats are also common. Salted and cured jerky type meat can be found that is surprisingly incredible. I tend to like the heavily seasoned smoked meats. And no Eastern European market is complete without pickled everything. From cucumbers to watermelon, it's all here. Moving on from the meats and prepared dishes, we will go into the fresh fruits and vegetables. Having filmed this in February, the fruits and veg here aren't really jaw-dropping. As winter comes to an end, you're basically left with root veggies and greenhouse-grown herbs. However, starting in late spring with the beautiful strawberries and running until late fall with the apple harvests, there is an explosion of color and flavor at these markets. Bright, juicy berries, plums, peaches, nectarines, mountains of cherries and strawberries seem to burst violently onto the scene and then suddenly vanish as they go out of season. In the winter months, meat and root veggies rule the markets, but in summer, the selection and quality of fruits available here will make you question the authenticity of every other so-called strawberry that you've ever eaten. In every market, you'll also find regional specialties. In Ukraine, honey and beekeeping are exceptionally popular in rural areas. Homemade and incredible honey is sold here in such a dizzying array of varieties, I can scarcely tell the difference between them. And what's more, the booze beekeepers make from honey, Miadovucha, is a soul-warming, wine-like drink that tastes as if it came straight from heaven. Any market of considerable size will also have spice vendors. In the post-Soviet sphere, these guys are typically Georgians or Uzbeks. And I mean, what can I say? These guys make awesome sauces and spice blends. This is where I buy my spices for Lobio. These markets also have wares that aren't exclusively for your kitchen or your face hole. 
In Eastern Europe, even mildly affluent families have summer homes that are typically one or two hours outside of the city that offer them a quick getaway from the bustle, noise, and grime of urban living. These little houses are called dachas. Here you can find fruit trees, flowers, plant bulbs, gardening equipment, and a variety of other gardening supplies to help beautify your yard and dacha. You can also find cute little handicraft tchotchkes. Usually these have some long-held religious significance or are part of a larger cultural celebration. Especially in the spring and early summer, these markets can be a great place to buy homemade handicrafts for your home or kitchen. And for the post-Soviet pack rat, you can find old odds and ends. Usually books, coins, medals and awards, postcards, utensils, gadgets, and other random wares. While these things are grim reminders of a long dead past for most locals, these markets offer a more economical alternative to buying souvenirs, especially when compared to overpriced shops catering specifically to a foreign audience. So there you have it guys, a walking tour of a typical Eastern European wet market. Not nearly as scary as you thought it would be, right? I initially filmed this as a general intro to markets before the corona outbreak and planned on doing quick follow-up videos with specific vendors. Which of the goods discussed would be most interesting to do a follow-up on? Once the quarantine lifts, I would love to do an in-depth interview with some of the vendors that I know personally and offer more detailed inside info on the inner workings of Europe's traditional marketplaces. So let me know in the comments which interests you the most. Until next time, eat well friends. <laughs>